Okay, so uh, welcome everyone. This is um, the hour school for the 17th of October. And uh, this is the agenda for today. Uh, as usual, we will hear an update on NU6 activation, and then we will have some updates from the Zcash Foundation on Zebra and from the ECC on Zcash D, Sashi, and the wallet SDKs. And then we can have a quick update on Zcash D deprecation. Um, then we're going to the research and implementation updates, uh, such as ZSAs, FROS, Sustainability Fund, and training finality. Uh, after that, we'll have time for any announcements anyone might uh, want to share. And if there's any time and there's uh, any discussion that we want to continue with, we can, we can do that then. Um, so what are our schools? Uh, so this is a bi-weekly call where the Zcash protocol contributors meet up to discuss the upgrade timelines and process, um, the protocol research and development efforts, design and implementation of new protocol features, and we try to identify blockers and then resolve issues. And the purpose of this call is to try to make the Zcash protocol development accessible to anyone that is interested and to give more transparency for everyone that uh, wants to know. Uh, Anyone can register to attend at zcashabers.org. If you want to uh, present a topic or become more involved, uh, you can email us at abberscore at zfnd.org and request the presentation slot. Uh, there are other ways to get involved and participate in Zcash communities, such as um, applying to one of the community grant programs. You can take part in community discussions in the Zcash R&D Discord and the Zcash community forum. And there are clickable links for all of these at zcashhovers.org. And, ooh, sorry about that. And uh, so with that, uh, maybe we can start with some core team updates on NU6. Um, does anyone want to go first, either from the foundation or the ECC? Uh, let's see, I think that it is, I can't remember whether this was since the last Arborist call. I think perhaps it was. Um, uh, Zcash D600 has been uh, released um, with support for NU6. Um, and uh, everyone should upgrade to it. Um, the Zcash D510 uh, series will end of service halt uh, on or around November 5th. Uh, and so, um, and the, the current uh, NU6 activation, I believe, is around November 23rd. Um, so uh, anyway, but uh, but yeah, everybody upgrade by November 5th. Um, thank you. Uh, you go ahead, Mark. I was going to ask you. Sure. Um, so uh, we released uh, the first release candidate for Zebra 2.0. Um, uh, that's pretty much the main update uh, in terms of merged PRs. Um, we uh, fixed the uh, testnet issue and um, um, we have a bunch of uh, uh, all the PRs underway. Uh, the main ones are um, uh, those that uh, uh, will track the, the nullifiers and the um, uh, orphaned uh, transactions in the mempool. And then we have... Uh, so Mike, if I can jump in, this, this is just on a new six updates rather than the whole secret oh. update. <laughs> oh yeah, so um, yeah, the, the, the main thing there is the uh, release candidate. Um, that's all. I'm just going to add that we've created issues for the audit that least authority did. They're very minor uh, comments and we all will be fixing them in the next few days. And after that, we'll go back to least authority for validation and hopefully we'll get a final audit report that we can publish. Um, okay. Any any other updates from anyone on the industry? I think that's probably it. Okay. So, so now, uh, Mary, you can do the Zebra update, please. Um, so, um, yeah, we have a, a bunch of PRs underway that uh, 
uh, we need to merge. Um, we are refactoring our um, um, uh, um, uh, like Docker file and uh, the scripts related to it, and uh, then the the verification of orphan mempool transactions and um, uh, tracking the nullifiers. And um, oh yeah, and, and the, the cookie-based authentication for RPCs, uh, that's, that's ready to go. Um, and I can't think of anything else. And the, the, the report contains uh, two, uh, uh, two issues that we um, expect to fix quickly since it's uh, documentation and panics. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you, Marek. Uh, next up is the ECC. Uh, Chris, is that you today? Yep, so the main thing that uh, that is ecosystem-wide that's of interest here that we've been working on this past week is Strat has been uh, doing a lot of work on the PCZT, the partially constructed Zcash transaction format. Um, that will be useful both for uh, Frost signing and for interaction with uh, hardware wallets uh, and uh, attempting to take into account all of the myriad ways that one might want to collaboratively build a transaction with other people uh, and um, and put things together. So uh, there's a draft PR up, I believe, on the Libra Zcash repository that uh, that has a straw man implement implementation um, for that serialization. Um, apart from that, uh, on the Zashi side, uh, we've been uh, Working through, you know, some issues uh, related to, uh, you know, app stores, but uh, the major feature-related thing that we've done is implemented a kind of a minimal note management feature, so that uh, people's wallets can have a, a mix of notes in them that helps them uh, make uh, transactions uh, back to back, um, so that uh, we can finally fix the tip the barista problem. Um, so anyway, that will be coming out uh, in a release soon. Right now, uh, releases are blocked on uh, Apple being uh, a bit of a hassle uh, because of our Coinbase integration. So anyway, uh, don't have a really strong idea of when or how those, uh, those issues are gonna get cleared up, but we're working through them. Great, uh, thank you, Chris. Uh... Next up, uh, Zcash deprecation. I don't know if Faku wants to take this one or we, we take it between the ECC and ZF and anyone else. Maybe single labs. I guess we can uh, do a bit a bit. <laughs> go, go ahead, um, Faku, please. Okay. Yeah, on my side, I um, started um, contacting uh, some um, uh, block explorers. Uh, Started the outreach um, to know their uh, requirements, their, their RPC requirements, to um, be able to continue their services um, using Zira uh, instead of TKHD. And I'm currently taking on a small development task um, uh, on Libra Zcash since I was blocked on other work. Um, and I, I took something that was uh, a little bit on the side and not blocking anyone, um, but we'll make progress on the DAG, uh, of the deprecation DAG uh, as well. Um, we're, um, I'm a little bit behind on uh, gathering the RPC information we already have. I, I've been on with some like mild surgery of my eyes, so I didn't, I couldn't commit to much work these past few days, but I'll, I'll catch up. Um, uh, and that's that's the update I have. Then I we have uh, some open discussions items to talk later. And if Jason is around, we also um, are working with chain safe people because they are contributing 
on the in-memory uh, wallet uh, side of the Ccash B wallet deprecation. And there uh, we are working with, well, mostly Chris uh, is working with them to see how they can contribute upstream all uh, their work um, in, a, in a useful way for, for the code base. Um, so that, that's uh, another important part of the deprecation DAG that will be unlocked by those two items that the chain safe people are working on. Um, so that's that's the updates I have. That's great. Thank you, Paku. Does anyone from CEDEF or ECC want to add anything to that? Um, from Zingo. So yeah. I am um, working on. Uh, there's a few changes that are going to be needed in Zebra. Um, so I'm currently working on integrating Zebra's um, like primitives to use as the back end um, in Zyno. So there's certain uh, structs that at the moment are completely private. And so public getter and setter functionality will need to be added. So I should have a small PR early next week uh, in Zebra to add that so I can switch over fully. Uh, then we're also working on our test framework, which will show um, the uh, the functionality bet between LightWallet D and Zyno, um, so we can make sure that everything's running exactly the same there. That should be done probably next week. We'll have these two wraps up, and we'll uh, get to finishing off um, building all of the LightWallet D functionality in Zyno over the next couple of weeks, and we can move on to actually integrating properly with the restate service in Zebra. Great, thank you, Alo. We look forward to that, VR. Uh, go ahead, Mark. You're muted. Yeah, we also have a um, um, PR on Zip233 and we, we will start uh, reviewing that soon. It's the network system sustainability mechanism. Okay. Um, any any final comments on Zcash application before we move on to research and implementation updates? Um, uh, I have an update, but um, I'm just on my way home now. So um, if you can wait a few minutes, then I'll be able to get that. Um, sure. Yeah. Or maybe maybe let let's let's move on and go back to it when you're when you're home. Um, yeah. Let's do that. Cool. Okay. So next up is research and implementation updates and CCAS shielded assets. Uh, go ahead, Vivek. Yeah, hi. Uh, so uh, regarding the uh, DSA updates, uh, I'd like to start today with uh, asset swaps. So we've uh, continued with some changes to the zips that we uh, found like streamline things while uh, we proceeded with our implementation. And we've also completed a first draft of the changes to the orchard crate that uh, would be necessary for asset swaps. So I think that's still uh, sort of in review, but uh, it's sort of a first draft that's ready. Uh, on the uh, ZSA front, uh, I believe we've completed work on the Orchard and Libra stairs. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I believe we've completed work on the Orchard and Libra Zcash crates for the uh, ZSA protocol and the uh, tra transaction version six format. Uh, one of the recent changes that was there over there was uh, moving away, like we had originally used strings to store the asset description. Uh, but since the specification was that they should be UTF-8 and not must be UTF-8, that was not the uh, best way to go about it. So we like moved away from using the string format. But yeah, basically that work is done. Uh, we are now focusing more on like Zebra. I think the two main uh, pushes there are like doing the consensus rule verification and making the updates to the global state 
uh, to account for the extra stuff that needs to be stored for uh, ZSAs. So we, I think the plan there, uh, we had a meeting with uh, the Zcash Foundation yesterday. And so we will split the work that we've been doing into smaller PRs and uh, the review process should be starting soon. So uh, that's nice. Uh, regarding the zip, 226, 227, and 230 for the transaction format. Uh, those are ready for review by the zip editors. Uh, what's What I'm still working on is revisions to zip uh, two, uh, 317 for the fees to add in the details for ZSAs and something an analogous for zip 315 regarding uh, recommended wallet behavior. Uh, yeah. Uh, we also, I think the audit with the least authority also, we've uh, been discussing with them and that should be starting sometime soon. And uh, yeah, oh, and the last bit is regarding the transaction acceptance work that we were also designing. We've been sort of documenting the important considerations, the different use cases, those uh, things like that. And we've started designing, like made some initial designs based on that. So we'll be sharing uh, the document or like cleaning it up and sharing that uh, in the coming weeks sometime. So yeah, I think that's uh, it for the update. Thank you, Vivek. Any questions for Vivek on such a Okay, let's... Uh... We uh, briefly switch back uh, to see the application. Darima, please go ahead. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, oh, uh, okay. This was um, uh, research and development in general, as opposed to uh, specifically uh, oh, cool. deprecation. Okay. Well, um, let's... This, this is um, uh, uh, trailing finality layer. Um, oh, that's, uh... that will come up later, though. Oh, uh, okay. You're fine. Um... Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, was... do, you, do you want me to do it now or later? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, uh, so I figured out that um, it was possible to improve the um, security proof for Crosslink 2 um, in a way that allows you to effectively get um, uh, half the um, finalization latency for the same security. Uh, and I'm reasonably confident of, uh, of that now. Um, just need to to go through the details of the security proof, but uh, that's really useful. Because previously, um, if you set um, the number of confirmations to sigma, um, then you got security dependent on um, the, the best chain protocol. So the existing proof of work protocol um, with that many um, confirmations. Um, but the finalization latency will be two sigma plus one blocks. Um, and so it turns out that you can do it with the finalization latency uh, of sigma blocks plus whatever the overhead of the um, uh, uh, BFT protocol is, which is uh, kind of uh, as good as you could possibly expect. Does uh, wow. anyone have any questions? Go on. I have many questions, but maybe not for right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's it's not it's not obvious, but um, I think it goes through. The proof goes through. Exciting. Okay, let's. Um, if there's nothing else on training finality, let's go back to yeah, Frost. Suko, uh, uh, you want to go ahead or? Yeah, I have updates on training finality over let's... at Shielded Labs. Oh, no. let's go back yes. to the order because we were jumping on a plane. Should I do the first? Okay. Let's uh, go back to first, and I think it will be uh, yeah. the set of sets. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, we finished adding encryption yeah, authentication ahead. to the to the Frost server. Uh, which was kind of the final part of the puzzle, but we still need some no cleanups and stuff uh, to, to actually make the server something production ready. But the main part is done. Uh, and that's 
That's for the demo repo and the main Frost repo. We've been reviewing some contributor PRs uh, and we're going to make a chooser zero release very soon. We kind of been postponing for no particular reason, uh, but it is, it's going to be released soon. Um, you are still working on adding refresh shares functionality when you're using the DKG. Uh, there was some small issue there, but we sorted it out. And I think that's it. Yes. Thank you, Gomero. Uh, next up is the Seekash Sustainability Fund. Hi, everybody. Um, so we've got a couple major updates to share today. Um, we've made some changes that we think will help improve the community's understanding of what the sustainability mechanism is and how it functions. So um, <clears throat> first off, we've changed the name from Zcash Sustainability Fund or ZSF to Network Sustainability Mechanism or NSM. Um, I had announced on the forum a few months ago that we were considering a name change because the word fund created too much confusion. Um, people were sort of thinking of it in terms of the dev fund or that there were organizations that control or are recipients of the fund. So um, since the NSM is not a fund, it's an upgrade to the current issuance mechanism that enables ZEC to be removed from circulation and recreated as future block rewards to help sustain the network. We figured that that would help clarify its purpose. Um, so as a result of this change, we no longer refer to deposits or distributions and instead use terms like burning to describe the process of removing ZEC from circulation and then minting to describe recreating ZEC in future block rewards. And it still honors that 21 million coin cap. Um, and we believe that the terms burning and minting are easier for the community to understand because they're common terms used in other projects like Ethereum. Um, and so these they, changes, yeah, go ahead. The, the, um, the, the hypothesis or, or um, actually, um... Uh, Chris um, Strad and I um, had some doubts about that terminology, um, but we can. Uh, I'll let you continue your um, uh, your piece, and then we can talk about that. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's talk about it. So, um, the changes have been reflected in our zips. Um, you know, we zip two thirty three has been updated to introduce a voluntary mechanism for burning Zach um, ZF. We previously had the ZSF deposit field, and that's been replaced with burn amount. And then ZSF balance is no longer reflected. Um, it's instead defined in relation to max money by ZIP 234. And then in ZIP 234, we revised the motivation section to make it clear that smoothing the issuance curve is necessary to enable burn coins to be reintroduced into circulation in a straightforward and predictable manner. And then the term money reserve now replaces that ZSF balance and is defined by max money minus chain value. And then ZIP 235 is largely unchanged, except it now specifies the burning of 60% of transaction fees to support network sustainability. So the ZIPs are final, PRs have been submitted and they're ready for the ZIP editor review. Um, we've also finalized the code and submitted all PRs um, for all three zips ex implementations um, for zcash d and then for the implementation for zebra i think the the first zip has been submitted and the other two will be um, submitted in the next few days and that's for the actual code um, so our intention is for the nsm to be included as a candidate in nu7 um, i'm going to provide the update to the community later today obviously depending on the feedback that dara strad and chris have um, and I've also been working on a FAQ that addresses common questions about the project and, and sort of helps explain it to the community better. Yeah, so um, I, I, we had some comments about um, uh, terminology and also some um, questions about motivation, I think. Um, uh, and those are on the, um, the PRs, but uh, I'll repeat them for the, um, the, uh, the people here. Um, so for uh, the change of terminology from um, uh, on issue to burnt, um, we thought that um, 
So in other cryptocurrencies, um, uh, when you burn funds, they can't be reissued. Um, that that's um, uh, cryptocurrencies with a fixed supply curve like Bitcoin. Um, and so um, we thought that it might be um, uh, for people who are used to that property, um, it might be a little bit misleading to use burnt here because part of the motivation for this is to allow those um, funds to be reissued. Yeah, but um, I mean, and, the, um, okay. the, the essential difference, I think, is that burning implies reduction of the monetary base, and this operation is not a, redu a reduction of the monetary base. It's a temporary hmm. reduction of the monetary base, right? Because if those were never reissued, then... Yeah, it is a temporary it's a, it's, a temp it's a temporary reduction in supply, yes. Yeah, there's this conceptual difference between which we have flip-flopped at least once on at Shielded Labs between the coins are set aside and then those coins are reused is one way to think about it. Uh, Dodger says burning implies destruction. Exactly. And the other way to conceive of the same thing, which we're currently trying to switch to, is that those are destroyed and new ones can later be created according to the rules that still satisfy the 21 million cap and the supply and the issuance curve so, yeah, not, but, so the old ones are not the new ones but before you answer one of the reasons one of the several different re like I, I agree it's that 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 idea of the supply not going down permanently is confusing but also the the other way is confusing in different ways. And one, one more reason is um, we've been told by this high profile IRS lawyer who's currently suing the IRS and um, was in the news last week that uh, if you have a gold coin, now you owe the IRS 40% of it because you got paid. If you mm. have a gold nugget that you dug out of the ground, you don't. And the same kind of principle, so the principle is if the reward to a miner in a block is a, uh, a transfer to that miner from some agent, then that transfer and that agent, whoever it is, is subject to IRS and money transmitter requirements and securities, regulations, and so forth. Whereas if the miner actually just created that block all by himself independently, um, it's not because then the the agent in question is just that miner. Anyway, that's complicated mm. and weird, but that's one of the things yeah. that we were told along the way. Yeah, I, I mean, the agent is just the miner and then um, the protocol is um, a, a social construction. Um, in the yeah. same way that in the same way that other kinds of money are social constructions. Um, I agree with you. And let me read it real quick that it seems like, based on what this lawyer told us and what I see in the news, that government agencies go looking for an agent, right? Their job is mm. to manage, is to regulate what agents can do. So if we say somebody or something gave the miner these coins, then that activates them and they're going to go looking. And they could even potentially, I guess, maybe, maybe not, end up looking at the devs who implemented that code as the agent or all the other miners or someone as the agent. But anyway, that's a super big ball of wax. But back to your basic point, yes, saying it's burnt is a little inconsistent with like Ethereum terminology because like Chris says in Ethereum, when coins get burnt, the ultimate permanent monetary base is that much less. And that's what's different about the network sustainability modules that the monetary base eventually exponentially over the next in years restores. But it's also a lot like the Ethereum concept in that the person who burnt it has lost it forever and the monetary base has gone down by that much currently. Well, Ethereum is actually the wrong comparison here because in Ethereum, 
they burn funds, but Ethereum's uh, not not supply capped, so uh, future emissions can introduce, you know, arbitrary accord to according to like, is it EIP one five five nine that uh, that does that? There, there's there's something about that algorithm that allows it uh, greater issuance. There there's not a fixed cap. Yeah, uh, I mean, perhaps I shouldn't joke about taxes, but if I'm uh, giving away money uh, and lots of money as a dev, um, uh, as part of uh, um, a business venture, then that's a loss and I want a tax rebate. Um, okay, the that wasn't the only issue. Uh, um, Dodger mentioned the um, kind of burning um, as... Um, uh, having mental associations with destruction. Um, uh, I mean, that that is a disadvantage, I think. Um, any, anyway, so other issues. Just real from... quick, on this, on this one point, though, before we get to the other issues, are we saying that the problem is with the terminology and that the zips are still in a stable or acceptable semantic state? Um, well, the, there are some issues that are um, about uh, consensus rules, for example. Um, let's see. There was one issue about Coinbase transactions where the um, we thought the consensus rule was um, incorrect for versions uh, transactions versions before um, uh, this upgrade or whatever upgrade um, uh, would adopt um, the NSM. Um, and let me just check. I think it was in it was in zip uh, two three five, I believe. And oh, it was a conflict with zip two three six. So um, uh, zip two three six requires that um, each block balance exactly, um, and that's in conflict with the way that you specified um, the burn amount. Uh, field for zip two three five. So the, there's a comment there about that, but there's a relatively okay. easy fix to that because you can um, uh, require Coinbase transactions to be the new version and have the um, explicit burn amount field. Um, other things were, I think, mainly about motivation. So uh, let me find this. So the the motivation for zip two three four, um, it says that um, uh, sudden shifts um, due to halvings can potentially disrupt the uh, network's economic model uh, and impact its security and stability. Um, so it's we probably kind should of make unclear. this a zip editing meeting. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just but figuring can, out but I how much detail to, to go into here. Yeah, I mean, we. I'd be happy to set up another call with you guys to work through these issues. But I think that that's okay. Possible. Yeah, um, that's probably the best thing to do. So let's okay. do that. Um, real quick, I, I wanted to check on. with Mariusz and, and see if he had anything he wanted to say on the um, last of the coding that he's working through. Uh, yes, hello. Uh, so we have uh, posted all PRs for ZKD for all the zips. Uh, we have uh, one PR for Zebra, which covers the zip 233. And I am finishing my work on the zips 234 and 235, which should be um, posted either tomorrow or beginning of the next week. Okay. Yeah, I, I think, so the other issue, which probably we should um, consider here because um, sort of the, the uh, govern, governance implications is, um, do the community actually um, want this? It, has it been sufficiently motivated um, uh, well, that the, the community is in favor? That's an important question. So we've had conversations for the past year and a half on the forum. Um, we've done presentations in Zcon. Um, but I do think that, you know, now that we have, we understand what the timeline is for NU7 and we have an actual deadline, like now is the time to start um, 
you know, sort of putting the conversation to high gear, doing polling in November after we get to the go through the zip appro approval process or zip selection process as as is listed in the in the roadmap. Um, so I think we I'm pretty confident we can demonstrate that based on um, conversations I've had with community members and stakeholders. Um, but I think you know that will happen organically over the next two to three months. Mm -hmm. Because um, so if NU seven is um, is including CSAs, then it, it is already um, close to what we consider to be the the complexity budget for an NU. Uh, okay. Or, but close but, to what but, we have considered in the past to be a complexity budget. Understood. But here, here's one issue, right? Is that, is there a chance, like, so we've done the Zcash D and the Zebra D implementations because we have um, sort of think that it might take longer to do the Zcash D deprecation than expected. So if that runs into the end of the year or 2026, um, like, is... Could we get this in first? Like, would could this be NU seven and then ZSAs and Zcash D deprecation be NU eight? Because ZSAs are contingent upon Zcash D deprecation, right? Uh, they are. So um, the zip editors posted a um, a sort of rough timeline. I, I shouldn't speak for them because I'm not the zip editor anymore. Um, but it. My impression is it certainly would um, significantly delay CSAs if they were um, uh, put in a, um, uh, an upgrade after, um, uh, if they were not in the next upgrade, if they were in any way. So when you say the complexity budget, you're saying that it's it's too burdensome to include ZSA, Zcash D deprecation, uh, and the ZSF, and that... I, I'm, I, I'm not quite saying that. I'm saying it's it's close to the limit so it's there's a there's a question there as to um whether uh nsm is worth it to put it in the same upgrade okay um, um i just want to go on I, and it's also the case that um polls have consistently shown that the uh community um considers csas to be a very high priority Understood. I yeah, yep. Yeah, I agree with that. It is definitely high on the list of priorities for the community. Uh, Josh has had his hand up for a while. You want to say something? Yeah, it, it it was related. So the, the question was why were we implementing this in Zcash D? If we, you know, kind of, I thought we had um, kind of agreed that you know Zcash D deprecation was a priority, and we didn't want to introduce anything new to Zcash D. So the you know the goal within U seven was everything would be on Zebra at that point. Yeah, I mean this is something that I brought up in an Arborist call many months ago, and my understanding was that if we, you know, it was an option. So uh, well, also, we're, we're, I, we are further uh, along, and um, we've worked out the rough timeline, um, and that it. The window for that option is closing. Um, uh, and I mean, speaking as uh, ECC's engineering manager, um, uh, I think it's very unlikely that um, that option will be taken. And, it, and it's also why, like, why do we want to get this in now? Why should this be a priority? Because it, it does, mm -hmm. right, it, it's, 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 it's non-trivial. Uh, to get the get another network upgrade in there. Yeah, but it seems like you can always make that argument that, you know, there's nothing like overly sexy about the ZSF, right? It's like sort of saving for retirement in your 20s. So I think you can always say that there's going to be more urgent or more pressing things to get in. So it just seems to set bad precedent to say, well, we can just sort of kick the can down the road because this is, there's other things that are high priority. Yeah, but why why do we need this now, I guess? I, like that's what? something I just don't fundamentally understand. Is is why 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 should this be a priority for for Zcash now? One thing it could enable right away is if someone wants to donate to Zcash as a whole by burning coins using this mechanism. As soon as it's live, someone could do that. And this they is something could, that like it's, 
theoretical, you know, right? We don't have anybody. It's not that... theoretical. They're, like we've heard from the Namada Foundation, there's a post on the forum where they said they would consider donating to the ZSF. I, I, I mean, uh, the Namada people are very nice, I'm sure, but um, it's easy to put a post on the forum saying that you'll donate to something. Um, Um, should we move on to trading penalties? Because I did Katsuko off earlier. Um, Do we want to hear from Nate real quick? I think he had it. Nate and Josh both oh, yeah, have sure. their hands up. Yeah, go ahead, Nate. Oh, um, I was actually ready to move on, but I just wanted to say hello to everyone. I arrived late, uh, so I'll be late to this time slot each time. But um, hi, I'm I'm back. Hi, and welcome back. Be here. Nice to see uh, you. Back. Did you miss um, me saying the thing about latency? Um, mm -hmm. I, can't, yes. I can't remember whether I, whether I told you about that. I, I think I told you privately about that. Hurry up. There we go. We've moved on. Trailing finality. Uh, Suko. Um, for the last three Arborist calls, we've had this uh, living document work in progress about possible trade-offs and goals for um, Shield Labs' first deployment of Crosslink. And now we've boiled it down into a short and sweet list of goals and trade-offs. And we're going to post that to the Shielded Labs um, GitHub um, as the way to solicit feedback. So we're opening a comment period uh, as soon as we up to uh, upload that to our GitHub. And we're going to close the comment period on Halloween, the 31st. Um, it's short and sweet. Please look at it. And we're going to, um, that's going to guide the next step, which now that Nate's here, he can talk about the next step about implementing the stupidest possible prototype. Is that on Shielded Labs? Is that on Shielded Labs website? It's going to be on Shielded Labs GitHub momentarily as soon as All I right. figure out how to commit it. Okay, excellent. Uh, yes, so hi, I'm just sort of starting up at Shielded Labs and my focus is um, implementing and also fleshing out the design for Crosslink to make it deployable and then to see if we can get it deployed in Zcash. Um, and I, just for context, I've been pretty unplugged for a while um, with my family. So I've been relearning context of Crosslinks. Um, I had a good call with Dara to learn about like developments or updates um, he's been working on since I was last working on the project. Um, so that's been good. And then, uh, I, we have also started interviewing engineering candidates. So we want to hire a smallish team. Um, and the initial goal is to start working on a prototype even before the full design of Crosslink is done. Um, but that's a, a little bit farther out. So um, probably by the next Arborist call, uh, what I would like to have done is reviewed all of the um, tickets and roadmap that's in the TFL book repository. Um, and also we want to figure out how to distinguish between um, like what our plans are uh, and what we are building versus um, what may already be in the TFL book repository. So we might want to have a different roadmap or, you know, pick and choose different pieces or do them in a different order, things like that. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I need to figure out uh, the best way to track that. Uh, yes, Dara. Yeah, because originally um, that uh, book was written under the assumption that um, ECC would be doing um, uh, a large proportion of the work. Um, and so I, I think probably um, stuff about roadmap should just be removed from the book and it um, mm. should be a, um, 
a description of the proposed protocol. Well, yeah, one, that... one possible proposed protocol. Yeah, well, I, I think we can figure it out over the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, yeah, thanks. So that's my goal doing that and also interviewing and relearning crosslink and building Zebra and setting up a dev machine, all of the sort of ramp up stuff. So glad to be back. I couldn't stay away from Zcash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, good to work with you again. Um, there is one thing that um, I thought of. Um, so in addition to the uh, uh, improvement in latency, um, so it's possible to have um, uh, an intermediate state that might be um, less risky that we transition to first. So um, the there's a rule called the um, uh, the um, uh, finality gap rule, I think it is, um, uh, which says that um, if the gap between the finalization point and the um, tip of the chain um, exceeds a given number of blocks, um, then you can only um, uh, uh, construct safety blocks after that point, um, which probably would be Coinbase only blocks. And the, the rationale for that, well, it's described in the book already, um, but just to make sure that the, the um, uh, things like balances um, don't diverge um, at too much between um, those uh, or the number of transactions. Um, so you can deploy it with the um, the finality point uh, just as something advisory rather than um, uh, so defined to be the thing that you use to decide um, uh, uh, which transactions are final. So you can have kind of like a test mode where um, people are not really supposed to pay uh, much attention to that unless they are debugging the protocol. Um, and in that mode, um, you would switch off the finality gap. Um, and then it essentially doesn't matter if the BFT protocol gets stalled. Um, so you, you can potentially have it stall um, and um, the security properties are, are just the same and then you can fix the reason why it's stalled and um, eventually you enable the finality gap rule um, and you, you have it working as intended. Yeah, interesting. I, I really like, yeah, I like um, some of these ideas that are sort of, uh, it's sort of like, halfway between staging and deployment. So it, mm -hmm. it's actually yeah. on mainnet, but it's designed yeah. not to interrupt. Um, another reason I like that is if uh, we're really confident that that couldn't disrupt the normal operation of mainnet, um, uh, but it has the, like the BFT side, the trailing finality layer running, then it could involve uh, real Zeph at stake for people who want to do that. Um, and the reason I like that is it's sort of like a way to gauge how much people are interested in this. And it's mm -hmm. sort of similar to something Ethereum did where you could sort of yeah, like the beacon chain, commit yeah. to helping run the beacon chain and it took real money. Uh, and so they could sort of see, is there enough support to do this? Which is something you want to know for a proof of stake. You want to know there's enough stake interested. So yeah, I, we will definitely want to be figuring out those deployment stages. Um, I think right now, my focus is more on this prototyping piece, um, but there are some similarities uh, because in the prototyping, I want to, um, build out different milestones where um, that are similar, where portions of the protocols aren't functioning fully or uh, are being ignored or what have you yeah. um, to, yeah. to make sure it's okay. Uh, and by the way, the, the only reason this is possible is the simplica simplifications that I made for, um, for Crosslink 2. So um, to th thanks to Stroud and Nathan for those ideas um, that made mm -hmm. that possible. Yeah. Josh? 
Yeah, welcome back, Nate, by the way. Um, it's good to see you. So um, I'm wondering since, I mean, this is all very novel and to my knowledge, there's no real analog um, across crypto. Are we, or are you looking at um, kind of the economic or doing a study on the economics and the potential like security implications of the economics of this? Cause we're gonna have a having um, then we're going to split mining rewards between group stake miners and, um, and, uh, and, and stakers, validators. Um, and so my understanding is with this too, there's, there's some potential risk of a halt. Um, I think, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, Dara, but I, but I think you were uh, kind of teasing that out a little bit in terms of that potential risk. Yeah. Um, so, so for the, the, so the for the standard protocol, um, if you can cause a rollback of more than the, the safety parameter sigma, um, then you can force the um, potentially force the network to halt. Um, and that might be something that you can detect and, and um, uh, fix relatively quickly, but um, so that just for the protocol on its own, you can force that. Um, so you have to be fairly confident of what that parameter is. So the, the, the yeah. So then the question is, like for Shielded Labs, is there an intention to do um, that kind of economic and security work? The, yeah, well, we definitely want to have some uh, like estimates or uh, model for what we might expect for the security, given the expected issuance. Um, but that is that's going to be speculative to some degree and it will also um let's see so the 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 more tractable thing is to figure out okay if x amount of zec are being issued per you know per time per day uh is this how, how is the security compared to existing zcash proof of work without making this change is it better or worse or the same? Um, I think what Dara has done, so I don't know if people remember, but at a ZCon, I presented a much more hand-waving idea for doing a trailing finality layer. And during the talk, people were like, but doesn't that like have this, or it splits the amount of security to the weakest of POW or proof of stake? And if, um, if our understanding of crosslink is correct, it fixes, it addresses that problem. So Dara like has pulled a rabbit out of the hat. Um, there is precedent for it in Ethereum mainnet. They switched to a hybrid and then they switched to uh, full proof of stake. Um, so anyway, if if that analysis is correct and the design is good and uh, secure. Ideally, there shouldn't be a significant change in like security level, but um, but I'm somewhat skeptical of, of 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 people relying too much on these concepts of like level. Um, so, so, so it's yeah. it's like it's like pulling a rabbit out of a hat, but the rabbit has half the amount of food. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's not quite. The it, it's 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 a little bit confusing because, um, for example, uh, let's say the issuance uh, gets split half and half between proof of work and proof of stake. Um, so the difference between switching to crosslink, assuming it works in the ideal, uh, versus keeping proof of work, is not quite the same as saying, oh, uh, now it takes half as much. Uh, resources to do a rollback attack because now there's also finality. So yes, you can do right. rollbacks yes. cheaper, but the impact is is almost entirely mitigated. So uh, well, well, as long as long as the so, so this is the thing. You, there's no free lunch. Um, mm -hmm. The in order to get the in order for the security property to be meaningful. Um, 
so it's either one or the other of the um, uh, uh, finality uh, out of the BFT protocol or the best chain protocol um, has to be secure in order to get safety. But for um, liveness, um, they essentially both have to be um, secure and live. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's yeah. the no free lunch. Right. And part of the, so what that means more specifically is now there's a new attack vector uh, where an attacker could halt the chain. Mm -hmm. um, and part of the rationale for why using a BFT protocol is desirable in the first place is that halting is better than long rollbacks. Um, which is sort of like a subjective judgment call, but the basically the rationale is if there's a halt, everyone knows what happened. All exchanges will have you know have the same sorts of reactions. Whereas if there's long rollbacks, different everyone might behave differently. Um, and people and no can fear. get robbed. Yeah, yeah. People I, I mean, can I, actually I get robbed. Either way, um, but it's much harder. It, it, and until we have like a lot of DeFi, it's much harder to be robbed by a halt. Um, but you can still be robbed if there's any sort of like futures contracts or anything like that. Um, but there's currently uh, but not. So yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 pers I personally agree with this argument. I just want to make sure that the community understands. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's definitely trade-offs. Yeah, so I think maybe talking about security, so security level, like I was saying, I don't feel like it's good to rely on it too much, but my thinking is um, it's roughly in the same ballpark, but what's more important is there's these trade-offs, and this is the major one, is uh, it's now possible for the network to hold. Um, and that could also happen because of a bug or something like that, so. With the benefit that it's, you're less likely to get robbed. Yeah, it's it's kind That's of a feature that it's kind of a feature that a bug will um will also trigger the same behavior. The network may halt instead of people getting robbed. People yeah, can that's still the, that's get, the ideal. Yeah, people can still get robbed if both protocols get uh, subverted. Uh, Paco, you've had your hand up for a while. Do you want to say something? Um, yeah, in terms of um, how staking and mining rewards would split, um, what is there anything that um, avoids like my current miners to also spin up validators? Um, have you that that has kind of a trade off because yeah, they'll have a little bit more cost of spinning up a uh, staking uh, machine. They absolutely can do that, um, yes. And, but they can like have like two tickets, uh, you know, for uh, the the mining or the block lottery. Um, but it also gives the overall network security state um, some sort of a weird um, or hard to or maybe not weird but hard to determine uh, of security because like if for example I'm mining also staking I'm the same actor with uh, uh, unless I have like different personalities for doing each of the tasks like I have the same uh, goals so in terms of what have you uh, the, the protocol designers considered like the network effects uh, of, of this new dynamic? Uh, yeah, so the, we had like we've thought about it, but not um, like super rigorously. The like the first place that comes up for me is when trying to think about the security of Crosslink, 
asking yourself, okay, if an attacker has both of these kinds of resources, then they do something surprising by combining those resources. And I haven't noticed anything yet, but that's not necessarily uh, any kind of guarantee. So that's something we want to dig into. But then I think your question is going even further, like assuming it's secure in the sense of sort of like the micro view of how things run uh, in the in the present moment or in the um, in the uh, 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 ongoing case. Um, what about like centralization and economic effects and that sort of second order stuff? I think that stuff is super hard to predict anything about and different people have different intuitions. Um, uh, yeah, so that is something we should be thinking more about. Um, just like so far in thinking about it, it seems to me like um, if you had so many resources and you split it between mining and staking, um, uh, um, it doesn't necessarily seem like it would give you an economic advantage versus just staking or just mining to me, but um, I have to think about it a lot more. And also, it would be interesting to figure out if we can find other people who have thought about this kind of issue before. Um, again, another thing we could do is look at history or metrics about what happened on Ethereum. Uh, I don't know if Diana wants to go first or Zuko. Let's do Jared. Uh, Zuko's. Oh, okay. Um, so two things. Um, uh, I mean, presumably part of the motivation of moving to um, proof of stake is that it's possible to have um, more uh, validators, more independent validators, or independently controlled validators um, than there are mining pools, um, because. Uh, I, I mean, to put it bluntly, and this, this also probably applies to Bitcoin as well, um, proof of work because of mining pools is a lot less decentralized than, um, uh, than the original goals of the Bitcoin um, white paper um, uh, were aiming for. Um, and one way potentially to to get some of that decentralization back is to support a um sort of a wide range of validators um so if we're saying that um it would be unfortunate in my view if the validators ended up just being the the same organizations as the mining pools because that is not decentralization um the other thing is that we don't have to um have a 50 50 split so the what I was originally thinking was, was the disadvantage of having, um, say, let's say an 80-20 split, um, uh, uh, proof of work 80% and um, staking rewards 20. So the, the problem with uneven splits like that was that um, the, the protocol that gets um, uh, less funding um, is not then but is potentially not secure enough to make any difference. Um, and so you're in practice completely dependent on the other protocol. Um, but using the idea that I mentioned before, where you can um, you can do things more incrementally, so you're not um, uh, you're not completely depending on the uh, finalization point to start with. Uh, that could make it safer to start with um, uh, an uneven distribution. So that's, that's what I want to say. Uh, go ahead, Tuko. Two things. One, we were talking about safety against users losing money versus um, liveness. And while we're talking about that, Andrew Arnott posted in the text chat saying, you talk to a user who lost money due to a rollback recently. So that's interesting. 
check it out. Talk to Andrew, I guess. Uh, but the other the main thing I wanted to say was, hey, Josh, did that discussion of safety address your question about economics? Or if not, what is your question? Um, did it address the... Some, somewhat. I mean, I, I think like understanding the balance of the trade-offs of, of liveliness and um and 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 safety is 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 good it, it's like um like i'm wondering like i wondering like will like what is a price point that proof of work miners drop off um and we lower the hash because at some point like if the if the coin you know we have the it's it's reasonable to assume that i mean the the, the network is secure today Based on the current coin price, or down to eighteen bucks, or whatever it's been. I mean, we saw we saw a significant hash rate hash rate drop. Um, does that also uh, consolidate or further centralize power? Where we've seen, you know, via BTC has a you know sixty some percent of the hash rate today. Um, what do you know? What is a, a reasonable yield? Um, for, for proof of stake to get people to participate. Those are just questions I have that I, you know, I don't know if there's answers for, but is it something that we're looking at or something you guys are gonna be looking at? It's, it's a good point that we can, use, we can use uh, past reductions in price to, um, to assess whether um, we think that the proof of work part was secure at that point. So uh, it's, it's, you... entirely, it's entirely possible that um, the floor isn't, the, the, the price floor isn't caused by uh, miners dropping off. It's caused by miners deciding to hold on to their coins instead of selling them. So it could be that um, they'll continue mining even if the price is too low, but instead of selling those coins, they'll just hang on to them until the price rises. Yeah, there is a, sorry, just a little bit more on economic modeling. I, I have sort of sketched out a super simplistic model with a bunch of unrealistic simplifying assumptions that tries to predict um, if there's this much issuance for uh, proof of stake, how much is that should you expect to be staked? Um, but I have no idea how useful it is, um, but I would like to sort of flesh it out just as a way to think about, start thinking about those those issues. Paco? Yeah, um, I think Zuko has captured this on his um, Google Doc on desired requirements, but um, I, I see that this, this proof of fake could be a possibility of um, Making a, a, a doing a better job at at bringing or attracting new people, bring back people that left when when that that had GPU miners. Currently, for example, I, I really like what uh, Yasser from ECC pulled together, and Emersonian as well from uh from Zek dot rocks has um his own like stack of uh, utilities where it can be fairly straightforward to put up some Zcash infrastructure in the cloud so that it we can create um fairly um not complex you know so for simple because the cloud is always a bit complicated but the Fairly not complex uh, uh, steps or tutorials or documentation that helps people to spin up this validators, this uh, infrastructure that that can, you know, help us to have a different faces in both sides of the counter, like on the the staking window or and the stake and the mining window. Uh, if if there was an administrative office of the protocol, right? So. Uh, uh, so if you if you're a miner, you will be a different person than a staker because 
maybe it has different incentives or maybe the, the staking mechanism is more help helps to foster diversity and, and brings uh interest in different kind of factors that were currently not um a very appealing uh protocol um that for them. So I guess that's that's also some a dynamic that could be at play that could help us like avoiding this, you know, um people with two masks, like people disguised as minors and stickers, depending on whatever is the math for them or convenient or maybe that they do both. Um, and I, I think that maybe it could be a good idea to figure out if if there's a way to have a like more like popular or you know uh, average people friendly kind of like staking mechanism in terms of cost. Yeah. Um... So uh, we talked a lot about Crosslink, but we haven't talked about um, uh, the staking mechanism and um, in particular delegation. Um, and um, I think actually uh, whether delegation can be done privately um, is an important question here. Um, so Penumbra does allow that, so it's, it's certainly possible. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was, have we considered hiring an economist? Um, because it sounds like we're trying to um, uh, answer economic questions without the benefit of um, anyone who is um, trained in that field. Uh, I mean, I know economics is, has been called the dismal science, but that doesn't uh, uh, every that everyone who studies it doesn't know what they're talking about. Uh, I, I did suggest that we hire an economist before um, uh, leading up to the Zcash launch, but that was never taken up. Um, we are running out of time. We still have a little bit of time, but uh, if we can start wrapping up the training generator discussion to give time for um, any announcements and further discussion, if there is any left. Uh, but I think, uh, Suko, I think you had your hand up next. Um, based on past experience, if you're going to hire an economist, it depends on how specific your questions are, how useful the answers are. That makes sense. Um, so the open comment period on cross-link requirements with the GitHub link that is soon to come uh, would be a good place to hone in on the specific questions we have. It, it shouldn't be only cross-link um requirements because there's also requirements on the staking um design mm -hmm. okay shall we move on so um i mean we're probably wrapping up um does anyone have any open announcements uh please if you're an attendee and you have an announcement that you'd like to share just raise your hand and i can let you speak or promote you to panelists, whatever you prefer. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll just wait a while to see if anyone has any open announcements. Um, guess not. Um, we do also have some time for more discussion if there's there's any other topic people would like to discuss, uh, go ahead, Paco. Yes. Um, last week, um, we were talking about um, grant, like C Cash community grants, uh, uh, grantees, and um, side effects of development, specifically on what we would like to um, we were um, we were talking about uh, about like grants that um, maybe ha are like development heavy, but they have this side effect of like spinning up their own forks of um, of of, our, of of different pieces of, of the Zcash uh, tooling and. Um, we we were thinking about how to how uh, on getting feedback from 
from everyone here on how we could better um, maybe structure requirements for um, ZZG grantees to um, so that they know that that there's going that that there's going to be uh, you know more incentives uh, for them to for, um, to actually do development but contribute upstream and and maybe in a positive way like instead of like being dissuasive uh, on for them on not to do it um this this um came up because um on this conversation we were having um between uh ECC people and chain save on on their in memory wallet development um there was this question on hey we're doing all this work uh on contributing to upstream but it was not really on our brand and like like have done with what we had to do we stream of this um uh, uh Paku, your sound is dropping i think oh, it actually oh, might be I think it actually might be an interaction with the um, noise counseling. Um, uh, maybe for, for future reference, try switching that off. Oh, I don't know if I broke completely and it was totally unintelligible. <laughs> uh, we got most of what you said. Um, yeah, basically about um, uh, the needing to be um, sort of clarity on what is actually included in a grant um, uh, and uh, of whether incidental upstream um, uh, uh, improvements are included. Um, I think NIM also um, ran into this issue. Yeah. And so, so I guess that's feedback for also, the ZCP. Yeah. I, do, do you think that because something I uh, that uh, it was a valid criticism that that Chris um, gave is that it's it's awesome to have like this kind of contributions but if the results or development uh, if the result is a dangling fork of a library that someone else maintains then it it be, like with time it becomes to be like a less and less of a tool to put it in a way so that's why it's, it's my concern to uh, to have feedback from the developer community that is developing tools to um, to actually you know maybe better structure uh, our the, the CCG process to to um, to you know have more fruitful contributions and like more like code flowing upstream and and less like dangling. Yeah, some, sometimes it's not even clear whether um, uh, whether a branch is um, kind of intended to be included or whether it was for prototyping. And do you consider like um, any, um, would you, like I thought this uh, that like if, Let's say that if, um, do you consider then, how do you consider a dangling fork of Libra Ccash, for example? Do you think that it's something of neutral value or positive value or negative value in the midterm, it's, long term? If, if it's if it's not in a PR, it might as well not exist because we, we don't go through um, forks that are not in PRs and, and look at them at all. Um, if it is a PR, then um, we might still need to have our attention um, drawn to it. Otherwise, it's it might fall through the cracks. Um, yeah, developers are busy, and I know this this probably applies to the um, ZF developers as well. I think from the set of side, if if people want us to be a PR, they should. And normally, we do check. I don't think we have as many PRs. As there are in, you know, uh, Libra Cash and all the other uh, ECC projects. Yeah, but... I mean, the, 
there's there's a bunch of PRs against um uh Zcash D that are, are never going to be merged. Um right. yeah. But yeah, and I feel bad for the work that um people did on those. Um uh sorry, Strad. Um because it, it applies to some of our own developers as well. Um but that's the way it is at the moment. Um and hopefully we can avoid that. Um uh, or certainly avoid it getting that, that bad for Libracy Cash. I think a heads up is always nice. Like if you are going to submit a PR, reach out to the team and let them know that you actually want. It is the intention for it to be merged upstream and, and you know open up a conversation with them rather than just uh, randomly putting PRs out there, right? Um, yeah, I, I mean, actually for Libracy Cash and for the um, kind of the the repos that have a lot of development on it, it's not so bad. Um, but if you put a PR up on one of the ancillary um, repos that are um, dependencies, then um, yeah, a, a heads up is, is definitely important in that case. Okay. I think maybe if, um, if, if a grant is expected or likely to involve changes to a piece of software that is um, maintained by somebody else within the ecosystem, then a prerequisite maybe of, of uh, or during the process of evaluating the grants, maybe there, there should be a conversation to say, right, we wanna make these changes to Libra Cash or to Zebra, whatever it happens to be. Um, are those changes acceptable? Does there need to be a, an audit, um, stuff like that. Because um, I think in, in the past, um, grants have kind of been approved that hadn't been uh, perhaps closely examined. And there was an assumption in the grant that there would be some some support or some work carried out by other other third parties that they that they had never agreed to. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe going forward, it's just something that, uh, that, that the committee just needs to be aware of. Yeah. So yeah, we talked I, about that, this at the last well, ZCG meeting and going forward, we're going to include that as part of the application process. So, um, it's, it's part of our review. Um, and I think that will help, but I do want to say in this instance, chain safe said, um, you know, they, they expected some work to be done in Libra. Um, but they didn't expect it to be as significant as it was. And so it sounds like they want to apply for another small grant to cover the work needed. Yeah, the um, so in the NIM case, um, I think they ended up um, doing a lot of work that wasn't um, very explicit in the, the grant um, and we'll be able to use some of that um, but not all of it because um, some of it is in Go and um, uh, like what it, the Go implementation of like what D is being um, replaced with um, Zeno in the medium term. Um, and so, yeah, uh, people can end up doing interesting work um, that is useful for prototyping, but is not directly covered by the grant um and if that happens too often then presumably they'll get discouraged from um, applying for grants so uh, i'm i'm glad to hear that the process is going to be tightened up a little bit though yeah i brought up the um chain safe case because it was the most recent but they have been also like super you know, going the extra many miles <laughs> uh, to contribute upstream because they they're super committed to the project and 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 to Zcash. There, are, but um, there there are also cases where I, I've seen like the ledger uh, grant has a, a lot of like dangling forks that. Um, for example, and something that I've like checking, been checking in, in some grants that I've, uh, I've seen in the gallery is that they maybe the, what something that grantees do is like they put this like possibility of my work not being merged as a 
risk of the project. Um, so it might signal that we as a, like Zcash developers might also have to maybe adjust a bit um, our, our processes to, to not that be perceived uh, as a risk per se, uh, uh, I guess. Yeah, the, the problem has, has always been the, the very high quality standards that we insist on and have to insist on. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, merging messy code can uh, can sometimes be a serious problem. Yeah, um, I totally agree with that. Um, thank you for raising that part with us. Um, very interesting. I think it's um, grantees shouldn't assume that developers are also reading all of these. And I think we are now getting into this process where a CCG will reach out if there is something that requires input. And I think that's been working great. So um, I will do things a lot. Um, we have three minutes left. So I think if there's any uh, quick discussion that uh, we want to have, then otherwise let's wrap things up. Um, I guess probably probably not much more we can discuss in three minutes. So the, the, um, the only thing that I want yeah? to, uh, um, since this is since the last uh, Arbor's call, um, just call everyone's attention to the post on the forum for the NU7 zip deadlines um, and and the potential timeline there. Um, yeah, the essentially zips must be semantically stable uh, and in pull requests by November 5th um, for any chance for them to be included in NU7. So. Yes, great. And Sarah, Emma, and Chris, um, so Nate and I can reach out to you and set up a call early next week to go through those ZSF dips, uh, NSM zips? Yes. Awesome. We'll do it. Thank you. Great. Uh, let's leave it there then. Um, thank you to everyone for participating today and for the, the great discussions. The next average call will be Halloween themed it seems, on the 31st of October at 21 UTC. Uh, clocks, we're in that time of the year, but clocks are changing, double check, triple check, quadruple check. Uh, the UTC That's time very spooky. Is... Yeah. But, yes. <laughs> yeah. that, that was not me uh, doing all the lovely graphic design, but uh, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, just uh, please be aware of the UTC time rather than what your calendar says, because I know calendars uh, do lie sometimes. And um, yeah, we'll see some of you then. Um, thanks, everyone. Abolish time zones. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Bye. Bye.